Hey guys, Clumsy here. Welcome back to ETS2 Season 2. That sound you're hearing? That ringtone? Yeah, the guys are calling me up again and I am very nervous because uh, number one, we are late. And number two, we had a problem that I just noticed the last episode. That it is super quiet on the reefer. We should be hearing that constant humming noise and we aren't. So, um, I tried to restart it. I hope that it will start again soon. We'll see though, okay. And it is getting dark, so it looks like this is going to be a nighttime drive kind of thing. But yes, let's hope it does work this time. I did check the ice cream and thankfully it's super cold outside that it uh, has not really molten yet. I think I'm hearing it now. Oh, that worked. As with most of everything, like 50% of the time, you just need to turn something on and off, restart the system, and oftentimes it works. <laughs> yeah, you guys hear it? Uh, the gentle white humming noise. If I slow down here, you should hear it a bit. Yeah, there it is. Might be hard to hear if you're not having, if you don't have earphones. But yes, I'm hearing it definitely. It would be nice if we had that color, that, that indicator, but I think that's mostly a, an, a US thing, right? Cross the rotary. Second exit. Yeah, I really like that idea from the US trailers where you have actually like a green light at the corner of that trailer. So when the driver looks at their side mirror, they can easily see if the, if the reefer is still working properly. Did they say which exit did Lori say? Exit I think it's the second exit. There it is. Trying to keep quiet to listen to the reefer. Is it back? I think it disappeared again on me. I might have to have this serviced afterwards, guys. This is a relative new trailer we got, right? Yeah, I'm not hearing it again. Is it one second? Well, maybe at this point. Oh, I think I hear it. You know what? I'm not sure now. I am not sure now. But yeah, maybe at this point, the best way to do about it is to just get to our destination as fast as possible. and uh, try to keep as much of the ice cream intact. So yeah, we have 14 tons of them and we don't want all of that to go to waste because uh, I'm not sure about you guys, I'm not sure about you wintry folks, but uh, for me, even if it's a bit cold, I still want my ice cream, even if it's a bit cold outside. But if it's like cold, cold, like negative 20 degrees cold, I'm not sure if I'm in the mood for ice cream by then. <laughs> so you guys let me know you guys who are more familiar with uh, the winter oh my goodness these lights are beautiful yeah night driving here in this area is amazing look at those vibes very nice what is the speed limit here i have no idea would have expected it's 80 and we are going to uh I think it starts with an A. Kind of forgot already. Yeah, I think it should be 80. We stay here on this road. We are. It looks like we are on one of the main highways here in Norway. That definitely looks like it based on all the lights we have. Oh my goodness, the vibes. Yeah, I think this is the, actually the best time to go night driving. When you have all these... Um, city lights, highway lights livening up the place do you, guys, do you guys hear the humming? I'm getting paranoid now, this is why I want that light I wonder why it's not a thing in European trucks because how would you know if something malfunctioned like in our case how would you know if the reefer is still working from inside here 
when you have such good sound insulation that it's hard to distinguish. You know what, speaking about that, maybe if we lower our windows we'll hear it. One second, let's try it. Well, I'm hearing the wind for sure. I'm hearing the, the gear shifting. Maybe let's say 70 here. Yeah, I think I'm hearing it. Yeah, I think I'm hearing it. It's very subtle. It's very... You can't hear it that much anymore because it blends with everything else. But I think it is working. Okay, good, good, good. So that restart did work. I just have to have it checked afterwards. Goodness. Oh my goodness. This feels like a different game altogether. Look at the lighting. Beautiful. Mixing the like the fluorescent Cross and the... the First exit. Oh, oh, oh. I don't have the fancy exit terms. The, the yellow and the white li lights. <laughs> That's what I mean. Here we going? Are we close? This looks like we branched off the highway. We did already. This might be the shortest episode ever, guys. Cool. Well, it's about time we arrived, I'm sure. <laughs> the, the the dispatcher has been calling me non-stop. Second exit. Second exit. Alright, that means go straight ahead. Exit ahead. Yeah, and unfortunately, it looks like because we've branched off the highway, the the lights also is uh, in not the best condition anymore. But it's a nice uh, it's a nice variation, right? We've been driving at daytime the past two episodes in this trip. It's time for a bit of night driving, and I'll do as you guys instructed. I won't use my high beams so that my night vision, my eyes, can get. Um, used to this kind of lighting and so I, I rely on my eyes instead of the high beams because the high beams can be a bit well number one it can be blinding to oncoming traffic but number two it will get your eyes it will make your eyes constantly adjust to uh, bright and then dim situations so you might it might be a bit um, dangerous when that shift happens, like when you switch shift from high beam to low beam, then there is that point in time where you hardly see anything, right? Until your eyes uh, get used to the lower of brightness. And uh, during that time, there might be something on the road which you don't spot. So I think there is some merit to staying in low beams the entire time. Unless you can stay high beams the entire time. Yeah, that's also something. But yes, for now, I think we go with this. Because the contrast, let me show you. You go high beam like that, right? It's just good. And then if there's oncoming traffic, you have to turn it off. But then, yeah, that transition from the high to low. Your, ki your eyes kind of take a few seconds to get used to the new brightness setting. And that might be dangerous right there. That transition, if that happens often enough, can actually, you, you're left with like a, literally a blind spot. So yes, I get the point. But yes, I don't like this uh, lack of lights in this area. Looks pretty real though. And I like that you have at least those, um, what do you call them, bollards? Are these also bollards? which have the reflectors in there. Quite nice. Reflectors with... Um, on the sides of the roads to help you still have an idea where the road is even if you can't see it immediately. Yeah. So at least you have like this boundary. The road's actually bending to the left. It's actually climbing a bit. Actually going on a slope here, going downhill a bit. So even if you don't see the road yet, yeah, those very subtle, right? Very subtle. I didn't really appreciate them before. But those reflections actually help a lot. Yeah, see how they appear in there from afar? Very good. What is this? Um, no goods to declare. Oh, looks like we are going through a checkpoint. Why is that? Are we going are we 
Are we crossing over to Sweden, maybe? Do I have goods to declare? Um, I guess we do. I'll have to check that. Alright. Uh, I hope there's an exit there at the end. Where do we stop? Yeah, I can hear the... You guys hear the reefer? It is there. Definitely. Okay. Cool. So I'll uh, get back in a bit. Just have to settle things here. There's, doesn't seem like anyone's here though. But yes, I'll ask around. It looks like the reefer stopped. Oh my goodness. Okay, let's, ha let's have a look. Well, I couldn't really find anyone, so maybe let's just move on. Oh, this light box though, right? The Clumsy Geek light box, thanks to Silly Panda. Another one of his additions to the entire repertoire of clumsiness for this setup. Thank you, Panda, for making all of this possible. There's the reefer starting up again. Good. That's good to hear, literally. But yes, let me know guys, if you have more context on that, I would appreciate more info on that. How do European drivers know if their reefer is still working? If they don't have that light on the corner of the trailer, how would you know that something is still working as it should? Is there like a connection to the truck maybe? Telling you the status of the trailer? I mean, with the technology these days, I wouldn't... Uh, that should be pretty easy to do, right? You have a connection from the trailer to the truck and it connects to the one of the dashboard lights or whatever. And then if something goes wrong, you get an indication. So it, it doesn't sound impossible to me, but I don't have a real idea on how it works. But it's good to know these things, right? It's very useful. So if you have more info, let me know. If not, no worries. Let's enjoy the night driving together. Oh my goodness. It is super dark. Thankfully we have other cars on the road. And yes, I won't turn on my high beams. Our night vision is fully uh, intact. And I'm just keeping a close eye on the bollards. Or whatever they are, the reflectors up ahead. To make sure that I'm not jumping through the river <laughs> on the next turn. Quite nice though actually. I think it's the first time I've really tried navigating the night the roads by night this way. Like really looking hard right in front of me, right in the middle there for everything that pops up. All kinds of lights that appear. And we have lights here now, thankfully. So it looks like we are entering a city area maybe this is where we're delivering stuff i hope keep an eye out for a sign telling us which one which place this is and lori has gone quiet so i'm hoping one second let's turn on the map okay we are here in are good but that was nice right that transition so it was super dark countryside road and everything and then suddenly you start seeing these lamps it's a good indication that you're starting to enter a city area. And even before we entered the city, we actually got those lights already. There was an indication for it. Oh crap, that was quick. Okay, here we are. Um, where the heck are we delivering this? Oh, I see the cones. Okay. Um, right, might be best if we park through here outside. I hope there's no one there. I think there is a car, but you just, you'll just have to wait for me. Okay, he, he cannot wait. Can this car wait for me? I think this one can. Okay, good. Thank you. Appreciate it. So I need to reverse here. Alright, something like that. I don't see the cones, but I have an idea that it's somewhere here that side am i going to hit the car i sure hope not i'm going to hit this bush though i think yikes just seeing if i can power through that bush 
the trailer is in a bad angle looking pretty scary there we are oh crap that was not what I wanted at all We are stuck for real. Oh, there we are. There we are. Okay, good. Where's the cone? Do I see the cone anywhere? I see the cone, I think. Yes. I see it, but we're not on the right angle. Let's go and correct that. You can see the cones there at the back. Whew. That will buff out, guys. That will buff out, I hope. <laughs> One second, let me go on outside and see. Where the heck those cones are? Oh, okay, okay. We might have... Um, I see. Might have turned a bit too too much. So let's go this way. Yeah, there's the reefer sound you can hear in all its glory. There's the cone we're going. It looks like we arrived so late there's no one here anymore. I hope there's someone still waiting to receive these goods and I'm not sure how they're planning to unload this trailer it might actually be that they're asking us to park through here because we can only unload in the morning that's why they say okay just park there and then uh, we'll uh, meet you in the morning dang it yeah, we'll have to find some place to rest well we have our truck what am i saying we don't need a hotel we have a full-blown sleeper right here inside together with rex and alan so no need to Look for a hotel. We have our own mobile hotel right here. That is the advantage of having a sleeper. But yes, that means we'll be hearing that uh, reefer sound all throughout. But I guess it's better to hear it than not, right? Because if we don't hear it, that means it's broken. Alright, that looks good. We made it, guys. How late are we? Well, we'll see. Alright, so... Here we go. Moment of truth. Late. From Dombos to Are. Oh, it's Ore, I think. 22 hours, almost one day late. <laughs> Whoops. Too much sightseeing and we kind of lost half our income, but that's okay. Mission achieved, you were able to do go sightseeing, right? So yes, the new promotes areas. Now discovered. And now we'll continue our way north over here. And next target is Finnmark. Cool. Alright, so hope you guys enjoyed that trip. Thanks for watching. And uh, let's see. I'll have a look at this reefer. See what's wrong with it. Thanks for watching guys. Have a nice day. Clumsy trucking. And uh, catch you in the next trip. Bye-bye.